Today I'm going to be talking about financial management. It's about money. Uh, I won't go to talk about the academic parts. I mean, I think I mean we all have that. Uh, a lot of us are MBA holders, so we understand what finances. Just for those that do not know, what finances as relating to money and monetary uh, and funding. So that's finance. So anything that has to do with money, funding, finance. What's management? Ability to control and direct. Um, put together, manage. Um, it could be a business, it could be um, a government, like class professor said, management of the state is the function of the state governor, so that's management. Uh, the pastor manages his church, and he has managers too, and uh, he is to pretend over, directs, controls, give them what to do, uh, so that's management. So financial management would be management as it relates to finance. And what is business without money? So, what's business without finance? Uh, I would like this to be interactive because if we just keep talking and talking and I don't know what your challenges are, we might go out of here looking the same. So, what I'll do is I'll probably just tell us about, just give us some little tips in arranging your business financially to be able to assess funding. Uh, so, I would like to have like five questions. This is going to be you, me talking to you based on your own challenges. So, I'm going to have like Maybe two, 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 is that fine? I want us to talk based on your financial challenges, what you have, and then we'll probably take your story and then um, discuss your story and think of solutions, offer solutions that can solve your problem financially. So is that fine? We like that. Or I should just go ahead like uh, a pastor. I can go ahead and say I talk very fast like pastors too. Pastor, I might not try. Anyway, so um, before we go to that, you just know that three things you need to do, aspects of financial management that you need to do before you start any business. As you conceive those great ideas, make sure that you have been able to envisage whatever challenges, whatever resources you need to put into that business and you'll be able to actually imagine the, the funds inflow into that business. So what are we talking about? How much you are spending and how much you intend to get? Inflow and outflow. And that document that gives us an inflow and outflow of uh, businesses is called what? A budget. So you cannot go into any business without having a budget, a concise budget. So we have to have a budget that tries to, so it's, a budget is more like a financial or a monetary expression of your thoughts of your business. Because money will be spent. And when you spend the money, you expect to get money back to the business. So you need to do a projection of how much you want to spend and how much you will receive within particular time frames. So do not fail to get that budget. And apart from the, the budget, could be a capital budget or it could be a recurrent expenditure, um, I mean, um, a working capital budget. So what's a capital budget is the one that you put in when you're starting a business, say you want to start a tailoring shop, you need to buy a sewing machine, you need to build a place, you need to get a shop. It's a capital budget. It's something you do within, you don't do it every financial year, so it's something you just do, and you know that you're done with it. And then you have recurrent expenditure, so you prepare a recurrent budget, which is what? The money you spend every day and every day to keep the business rolling, and keep it running. So you need to get that budget. So you need to have an idea of how much you need to start up the business, put it in place, which is not the most important thing. Most times we... I mean, one of the problems we have in this country is uh, us establishing companies, but the companies don't start running. Can you imagine why, do you understand why they don't start running? It might just be because they did not put into consideration the working capital aspect of the project. And that working capital aspect of the project is what gives you the dynamics of operation of that business. Because if you have considered the dynamics of operation, uh, then you would have considered how much you needed to run that part of it. So always put that in place. So two things we've talked about, always have a budget, and the budget could be a capital budget or a recurrent expenditure budget, uh, which is a working capital budget. And the third part I would like to add is um, um, think, think about where you have to get the funding from. How do you fund it? Because it's not enough to get a budget and imagine where you want to get to and knowing what inflow will come in when you do what you have to do. But how do you get that fund? that you put into the budget. And there are several ways to get money. It could be from yourself. And please, if you want to start any business, you have to put in your own seed money. You must lead a fight. 
I mean, if Ukraine did not go into war with Russia with full chest, I don't think all the other countries, the countries that are supporting them right now, will support them. So it means that if you want to do something, you cannot just go and meet Pastor. Pastor, so I have conceived this great idea, Pastor. Your message yesterday got to me. I've been thinking. I put everything I've learned into perspective, and I want to. I want to. I want to start shipping cars from Nigeria to Kotonu. Pastor, I need like three million. To buy my first car. If I'm pastor, I'll ask you, first thing I'll ask you is how much do you have? I've asked people, a lot of people that question, trust me, I've asked even someone in this building right now, I've just seen, I've asked her this question and she never came back to me. And trust me, I was going to give her 75% of what she needed to start a business. The question was, you want to do this, how much do you have? Because if you don't put in your money, it won't hurt you when you miss the money, when you lose the money. It won't hurt you. You get, you'll be like, oh, is he not last prophet? And if he has money now. What is 100,000 naira to him? It's gone, it's gone. And they, they might not come back. So for you to be successful and take your business seriously, you need to put in your own seed money. You need to start it. There's nowhere in the world where startups get funding from everywhere. You know, even if, I mean, you see a lot of shows on TV where the angel investors and venture capitalists come have shows and get people to make presentation. They still try to ask you one question. I have seen where you are going to go. What have you done? That's what you have done for the venture capitalist or the angel investor. It's showing that person that you have put in a little bit of your own energy, your own sweat into the business. So you need to be able to get some funding for yourself. I mean, First part aspect of funding is by yourself. You can meet family and friends. And you know what it means? That if it feels like if you lose your family's money, imagine that all your family savings they give to you to do a business and you lose the whole money. I mean, you can imagine what it will look like. All your friends' money. It's a very relationship because of business. So that's how the banks still work. They want to see that you have put in your own energy and your own stress and your strength and your sweat and everything. I don't want to know that you're very serious. Now that builds character because in lending from the bank, they don't want to see what your character is that. You need to be credit worthy. You need to be able to pay back when you borrow. And then you need to be able to know the people you give credit to. I mean, they should not I go to your, her online shop and I, I chat her up and she looks at my, my profile and I tell her, um, I need the supplies. When you supply, I'll pay you on delivery. Pay on delivery. She will first of all go analyze that client, check you every way she can, possibly can. And like, I'm going to spend money moving these things to who I'm sending them to. Uh, so, what if I spend this money and the person doesn't pay back? She's not just stopping at analyzing the person. She's going to consider the the the, the venue or the, the delivery venue where the person is delivering where she's delivering to. Is there a likelihood that there must be someone in that place if I go to deliver? Because if I go to deliver and there's no one there, shit, I will go back, right? Have you spent money, wasted resources, manpower, energy, everything? So it's easy. They need to, and you need to analyze your own clients, your own customers. You need to know that they are creditworthy and they can pay you back. Don't mix personal friendship and business. They are two different things, so keep them away. So that's something else you need to do. And then you need to be able to properly report. So we are, we, we, we've talked about a few things. But I want to get our questions. And I will give us just nine tips. Very, just nine tips to um, managing or starting up our businesses and how to prepare ourselves to be able to get finance and funding from finance providers. And if you are a woman in this house, I'm sure there are bank, banks that give women credit at very low, very low one-digit interest rates. Please. We're not here to promote banks. I'm not doing this because um, of my relationship with any bank. But if you're a woman, there are banks that are borrowing at 9% or so in this country. And you do not need to have any tangible collateral. So take advantage of opportunities. It might not last forever. So look at look for those institutions. If you just Google online, and I mean, go to the internet, you'll see those things. So if I have one, two questions, two challenges, let's address challenges financially. As it relates to money, uh, these people are big people. Nobody has problem with money. Oh, yeah. Oh. Thank you, sir. I am Gideon Ajewale. 
pleasure, Gideon. All right. Uh, so I, I want to know more about uh, getting funding, actually. I have uh, a business idea, graphics design, Mighty Seed, and I've been working at home personally, but my challenge is having uh, a place where I can really have an, as an office uh, where I have all these, because most times when I design, I go out to print from outside and they take most of the, the game of the business. So that's been a real struggle. All right, on the, so we keep it short. I understand your questions. So, oh yeah, graphic designer, you design, you make, you print and all of that. Uh, so you want to know how you can get money to expand on your business, right? Gideon, uh, that's why I think you'll be getting the questions. Um, just not the people down, so I'm addressing it instead of waiting. Okay. Yeah, so you, what have you done? You've been working from home, yeah? So the funds you need for what, basically? Yeah, so the capital to do what specific? To buy the machines. Uh, from what you're doing right now, um, how do you get your customers? How do you sell? How do you... Online. So do you have so much that you cannot take care of or you just want to start? Have you bought any kind of machine at all by yourself? Nothing. You can't start like that. You cannot move from here and get here. That's on another person's resources. So people, even the banks, even credit, uh, people that give credits will not give you astronomical, say there's something called organic growth. You need to have started and people know you and you are growing organically first by yourself. And that growth comes from your capacity to deliver on the things that you say you do. And people know that. So once you start doing those things by yourself, people will, the first people that will give you money, they're not even the banks. They're your friends that believe in what you're doing and understand that if they give you money, this money will not go into the drains. You get. So your family and friends will give you money first. So you would probably would have bought a smaller machine or get, gotten a place, rented a place that has a, a, a name on it. If you need it, I mean, because the kind of business you see, the kind of business you're doing, I don't know if you really need a physical um, office space or you can do it from your house. So in, you need a physical office space. So... That's what I'm saying. That's your challenge you would have been so because physical space would probably be like 250 to 500,000. Are you saying you have not showed your friends and your family that if you have the physical space, you can make 2 million within the time frame and pay them back? So you need to think different. People, you don't have a lot of angel investors in Nigeria that can just come and give you funds to put in a business that they do not trust. And how do you get trust? Trust comes from what? Precedence. Your, your, your relationship with people, the things you have done before, testimonies that you get, um, that they get from customers you have served, your after sales service, like Leush said. You know, people that can talk, disciples that can talk for you. Those are the things that will first give you that mileage, that leverage, that makes you credit worthy. Now, what is giving you Credit is not just the fact that you will pay back, but it's the fact that you can pay them back. And it's your family that knows that if you can pay back, then you will, you will not be able to run away with your money because, I mean, they know that you have capacity and that you will have the money and they know how to get the money back from you. But for the bank or other people that do not know you, they know that you have capacity, but they do not understand your character. So they cannot just give you the money first of all because they don't know if your character will make you pay them back. So start looking within yourself. But keep working hard. Working hard. Don't relent in your efforts. Keep working hard. But look within yourself. Convince the people around you. They need to be the first people. You need to, after sowing your own seed, the people around you need to believe in you, understand you. So you get to another level. And then start keeping records. I hope you don't put your money in your personal account and just spend it. Because if you go to a bank to get money, they will not be looking at your personal account. So that will take me to bookkeeping. What are one of the points I'm going to talk about later? So you need to try as much as possible. From the beginning, register a name. After registering a business name, have a business name. Just register it. It's not expensive. You get. 
make your phones go through your business account so they can read your story through your account. You can know your spending and phone utilization, the dynamics of your phone utilization. So if somebody wants to borrow to you, they know when you get money, they know how money goes out. Okay? All right. So, um, mm. all right. so, so we have somebody here. Up oh, here. Yeah. A lady. If you want yes. to clap, clap yes. now. It's your phone. Stand thank up. You. Stand up. All right. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Hi. Good evening. My name is Doreen Enwa, and I am the founder of DSAMS Entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs Universe. It's an organization for young entrepreneurs to come together, a unified body to encourage creativity and prosperity. So we are set to organize our first ever Calabar Entrepreneurs Trade Fair and Premier League this December. And I'm asking, how does one position themselves to get partners and sponsors for an event like that? Thank you. Have you had an event like that before? We have had a children's entrepreneurship event, a summer academy, the summer academy for children entrepreneurship. What yes, was your goal? To encourage children entrepreneurship. Okay. So people paid for the event, right? Yes. What is the patronage like? It was in terms of percentage. The patronage like... Were there a lot of people that came? Did yes. you, was it a successful event? Yes, it was. It succeeded, but not to our expectations. In a scale of 1 to 10? 6. That's, that's, that's good for the stats. For the first time you're doing an event, you had a 6. That's a B, right? Okay. What, what, so did you leverage on that event? Have you leveraged on that event for your next event? This is not about children. Now it's about the, entrepre the young entrepreneurs. Because I found out that most people don't have a means to project. Don't their worry, we under I understand perfectly well. Okay. Very, very um, nice, laudable thing you're doing, but you cannot you cannot break that. It's I mean you're trying to teach kids entrepreneurship, and now you are moving to a different demographic, right? No, it's not. These people that taught the kids are young entrepreneurs. And the event you are having is for? They to showcase what they do. Still for entrepreneurs, right? Yes. So I'm saying the same thing. There's a direct link between the first event you had and the one you're trying to have. And you had 60% success rate. Yes, sir. So imagine that the 60% of kids that you taught went home and their parents were convinced okay. that what you did was excellent. Okay. And then... You reach out to them, either through um, all the means, the marketing st um, structure and strategy that Lewish enumerated for us, through influencers, through um, digital marketing, and all of that. And of course, you did a good job. I actually have a certificate on digital marketing. Yeah, sir. So imagine that you leverage on that 60%. Okay. And if you had 20 students, how many homes will have had the information? 20. Another 20 homes, right? Yes, sir. How many parents will talk to the other parents? Maybe about 10%, 50% or 30% okay. if their kids did well. Okay. So you were able to market, market yourself from the things that you have done. That is the trust and the, the precedent I'm talking about. Okay. So you have not done things, this kind of thing before, or you have done something that looks like it. So there's a reference, there's something you can Fair look to. to. Because if you go to anybody and say, oh, this is what I want to do, and you tell me about it, I will be left to my imagination. And my imagination will be limited to my understanding of what you say to me. Mm -hmm. Which is also limited to my thought process, my thinking, like Pastor said. So I might not be able to get the full grasp of what you are talking about or put a picture, out, um, a picture of what you are trying to build. But because you have done something, you can show me pictures and you can show me there are testimonies to it and all of that. It will be easy to market that event. Mm -hmm. So I will tell you, leverage on what you have done, capitalize on the success you got, mm -hmm. yeah, and then do the other event. When you do this event, it will give you, it will, it will sell you out already. And so that's how you go. When people know that you have been able to do one or two or three, you have done stuff, the next time you say you want to do an event, I mean, Leosh will come and take his space. Because it's for entrepreneurs, she has a company. Lashakara will do the same. He will take his space and brand it, put it on the wall like this. 
because they know that you will command a number of people that will see through their own brand and it will be visibility for their brands. So you need to create the kind of market you want to sell and the kind of and the goal you want to achieve from whatever you're doing. Okay? okay. Please invite me. I'll come for your events. Okay, sir. All right. One more. Good evening, sir. Um, Joseph Moran by name. Um, Good evening, Joseph. My name is Michael. Thank you. I'm Michael. selling myself. Oh, don't be calling me, sir. My name is Michael. Okay? All right. Thank you, Michael. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Um, Joseph by name. Um, product designer and content designer. So my question is the aspect of finance management. So I, I work remotely and help businesses gain online visibility by designing content and also um, build products that UI, UX. But I didn't, at the end of the month, I always make money by it. When I check my, um, my book, I would like to call it bookkeeping, my bank account, <laughs> I, reali I realize that um, what I spent is more than um, maybe at the end of the month, yeah, at the end of the month, I might get 150 k Before the month even uh, reach, I have spent like above what I, what my salary is. So I, I, I am having, it's becoming a burden to me. So I really want to know how to control my finance. Do you own your business yourself? Do you own your business? Yeah, I have a brand I own personally. No, uh, let's narrow it down to the one you talked about. Is it your business? Yeah, I... Yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not. Yes. Do you pay yourself salaries? No, sir. So you just spend the money the way it comes. So you're an impulsive spender. You can't have balances. Do you understand? Now, that takes us to another thing. You might think your business is too small to separate it from yourself, but please try to separate your business from yourself. So what, one of the things your budget does for you is to tell you how, what percentage, it's not about the how much, it's about the percentage of whatever you generate that you will put into A, B, or C. So say you design or you create a content for Lashakara, for instance, and you, you, you expect to get 30 naira or 300 naira from it. Your business model, your rationale should be that you spent 100 naira in creating that thing, paying for lights, paying for everything and all of that. You take that out. That's your cost of delivering on that thing. And that cost includes your capital, part of your capital expenditure, which is called in some cases overhead, um, um, head office overhead, so people could call it. So you have spent some money before, invested in the business. So you take the cost of creating that thing like Shaka, you did for La Shakara out. Then you have another 200. From that 200, you should know that maybe 25% of it should go into your running costs. What you will spend in delivery or everything and all of that. You should say you're with your, at your, the point of budgeting too and your planning that 25% of everything, that's 0.25% of all any money you make must go into your savings for business expansion. Now, that particular one, and all of those things should be kept in separate um, places. If you are not disciplined enough to leave them in one account, keep them somewhere separate. So, the Shakara pays you. Make sure you take 25% of 300,000 naira, which is about 75,000 naira, I guess. Put it in an account that you do not, that is a savings for business expansion, for your growth, for your organic growth and all of that. Every other one you can spend as, as you wish. But have a defined way of spending your resources. If you do not have a defined way of spending your resources, then you will be impulsive. So you can't afford to be impulsive. There must be a part of your resources that is for frivolous spending, that impulse. You must know it, put it somewhere, know that this is how much, this is the limit that you give to people begging on the road, due to charity, I mean for, for sustainability, the sustainability now is all over the world. Uh, we need to care about other people, other stakeholders around us, including the environment and all of that. There's a percentage of your budget that should go for those kind of spending, for social work. For everything. If not, you run down the business before you even start the business. So discipline is key. You need to be disciplined. Your problem is not that you're not making money. Your problem is that you're not disciplined, you're spending. 
Okay? So you need to be decisive in your spending. Put a percentage to everything you want to do from how much you receive. It would have been different if you were not getting paid, but you say you, you get paid, but at the end of the month, you do not see the money. It must have gone somewhere. If you kept it in your house, I would have said, oh, maybe there's a rat or a snake that is swallowing the money. But if it goes to the bank, then there must be a withdrawal, and you're the only one doing that withdrawal. Okay? All right, so if you're not putting it in the bank, start putting it in the bank. It means there's a snake somewhere. If you're putting it in the bank, then you need to design your spending um, structure. Okay? So create a spending structure for all the inflows that you get. And that's part of what the budget helps you do, your expenditures. All right? Thank you. Okay, uh, that's all. I wish there was more time. So basically, um, we have talked about all these things. That's why I like us being interactive. Um, you, you're a small business owner. You're a big business owner. You want to, you want to start a business. Um, always, first thing first, have a detailed budget that explains what you want to do in financial terms. Okay, and that budget could be it could be capital budget, it could be recurrent um, um, expenditure uh, budget, and all of that. Have a business continuity management plan. So do not let everything not revolve around you. Okay. Um, if you travel tomorrow to Last Prophet has a, a guild of comedians around him. It's one thing he does, and I like he has like 30 comedians around him. So if he travels to maybe Pastor Akmaye decides to take since he admires Pastor so much, and Pastor decides to take him to with with him to one of his trips. Um, he has uh, all those other guys. There are plenty of them that they can keep what we're running, you know, so there's a business continuity plan in place. You need to have that. So your, the business doesn't revolve around you. But at the same time, as you teach other people how to do your business and have a business continuity plan, have a legal framework that uh, protects your business. So you you have your ownership of the business, your, your ownership of the content, your brand name and all of that is still yours and it's not theirs and they don't take it somewhere else. Make sure your staff probably signs like a confidentiality agreement or have a, a something that limits them from doing your thing that is strictly uh, um, related to you. So that's where you teach others how to do what you do and let, let, don't let the business revolve around you. If you work in your company, that goes back to you. If you are a staff in your own company, that's if you work in the company, make sure you treat yourself as a staff of the company. What? How do I mean? Make sure you put yourself on a salary and that salary must have a defined structure. So don't just say, I want to start a business and I must pay myself 500k because I'm the MD and CEO. No. Your payment should come from what you generate. And it should be a percentage of a particular thing. There must be a basis for your payment of your salaries. If not, people will be aggrieved in the company because you will not pay people equitably. You will pay people from the point of emotion and you cannot add emotions to business. So pay yourself at the, the same structure. Make sure that you are paid based on what you do and what you put into the company and what you generate from the company. And that way you will not be um, dipping your hands into company's finances. So separate, that leads us to see you separating your personal finances from your business finances. The money you, um, the, you earn from the church, if you work in the church and you're an organ, organist and pastor pays you maybe 50,000 naira every week you go to play in church, don't take it and put it in your other business and they think you're making money from the business because you will not be accountable to the business. Your business might not be growing, but you think it's growing because you're putting all of your other finances into it. So separate your personal finances from your business finances. You can borrow from each of them if there is need. But when you borrow from your business or the business borrows from you, make sure you categorize it as borrowing and that you have to pay back. Maybe no interest if you like. But for you to be very, very disciplined, you need to um, 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 regard it as an interest uh, uh, applicable um, loan. So you can get back um, when you are okay. That's the only way you can know if you are actually growing or you are not growing because you might just be putting in money into the business and the business is expanding and you think that you are growing organically as a business but you are not actually growing because you are just putting in funds from every other part, facet of your life into the business. So separate all of those things. Pay, your, pay when you borrow. If you borrow from your friend, pay back. If you borrow from a bank, pay back. The things the bank or the financial providers want to really look at apart from the fact that your business has capacity to pay back is self-liquidating is that you have a good character and that you have borrowed before and you are paid back. That will make people want to borrow lend to you again. I mean, Dan Goteda is the biggest man, richest uh, man in, uh, in Nigeria. He, he, he survives on credits. 
And why are people giving to him? Because he will pay back. Okay? So try to pay back and try to collect your own debts too. Like I said earlier, don't borrow to someone you cannot collect from. Don't borrow from a point of emotions. Okay? When it's business, when it's your personal life, you can do emotions. Uh, keep adequate records. That's what he says. You want to sell one cup of milk. You sold a cup of milk. How much did you sell the milk? Write it down. Um, how much did you buy it? Write it down. What's the cost of, what's the difference between how much you bought it and how much you sold it? Write it down. You put it there. What day did you sell it? You put it down. Take adequate stock records. Take adequate records. And financially, the easiest way to keep your records is get your payments through the bank and make all your payments through the bank. That way you cannot get it wrong. You can always go back to look at the audit trail and say, okay, this is where I spent this money on. This is where this money came from. So try as much as possible to use the bank. Don't be scared of, they are not even charges anymore. So don't be scared of the charges. Yeah? Use the bank. Because even if a bank wants to lend to you, they want to look at your records, your financial records, and how best to look at it. Apart from it's your really primary book of entries, it's your bank account. Really Anybody, even the tax agencies these days, what they look at is your bank account. So always try to use the banks. So keep out the critical and don't be impulsive in your spending. It's here again. And try as much as possible to save. Please, if you have any other question after now, you can reach me. My name is Michael Lederi. Thank you. Thank you. Put your hands together for me. Money, leadership, and men. Mm -hmm. Money, leadership, and men.